And welcome back, everybody. This is Movies Me and I'm Nick Callum. That's Kyle. Everybody goes, Kyle. Thank you, Callum. I'm doing good. How are you? Yes. Ah. Uh, now, uh, yeah. I'm Kyle. I'm Kyle. <laughs> Great start. Great start. As always. Yeah. Yeah. God, Great I, start as always. I'm not Kyle. I'm Callum. That's Kyle. Uh, and Hello. You, and do you know what we got today, Kyle? We we got we got the announcement of. Wait a minute. Hang on. Sorry, just jumping straight into this topic. Marvel Television. Yes. Is like their thing they're using now. Yes. What about Marvel Spotlight? That's um, that's like a different banner. I don't know if they're going to continue with that or not. Uh, Echo was Spotlight. Do you remember? Um, yeah. And apparently Born Again is going to be Spotlight. But is it going to be television or Spotlight? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, they really need to work out something for TV because it's... It's like the whole multiverse thing. It just feels very unorganized, very not planned very well. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of the most random shit ever, we got a trailer for Agatha all along. Now, let me tell you something. Agatha is a character that I really liked in WandaVision. Uh, another thing. Aubrey Plaza is in this. She's in the trailer. I love Aubrey Plaza. Big Parks and Rec fan. Um, but you know what? This trailer, as of right now, I'm not saying it's bad. Didn't really hit for me. I get what they're going for, but right now in the MCU, I don't know if it's something I want. When something like this comes out and it's like, but they're struggling with Blade. It's like, come on. Come on. The best the best thing we can get out of this is it'll be a fun show. Nothing, anything. Yeah. Nothing spectacular, nothing over the top. Just a, a fun show to watch, you know, week by week. <clears throat> that That's the best you can hope for this. I, I don't expect much from this, I'll, I'll be honest. I feel like this show was kind of... It's one of those things where it's like, oh, it wasn't planned or anything like that. Like, it wasn't planned. No, this was birth from WandaVision. WandaVision. Yeah, this was birth yeah. from WandaVision of, like, great character. Let's do an Agatha show. Now, we still haven't seen Vision after this as well. I'd have, thought, I'd have hoped Vision would have been the number one priority who clearly had a somewhere to go after WandaVision. Uh, yeah. But uh, no, we're getting Agatha. I look, I love Catherine Han, and she was great in it. But this, I, yeah, I don't know. Look, I'm on an MCU high right now. We got Deadpool and Wolverine in what? What are we up now? As of tomorrow, we're three weeks away. About three weeks. Three, yeah. two week away, one week <laughs> away. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we've got that to think about. This is coming out on September 18th, though. Uh, a bit weird. I'd have hoped they wanted a, you know, like a spooky release date, like an October release date. Uh, and if it's going to be the six episodes, I think it'll only run into the beginning of October, not up to Halloween. Mm. So, yeah. Anyway, just, you know, if you had to rate Agatha out of excitement, now you've got the trailer. What? Where are you putting it? I mean, I don't like Marvel TV as as a whole, like except for you know maybe like One Division, you know Moon Knight as with all its problem. Mo- yeah, Moon Knight with all its problems. It, I still enjoyed watching it week by week, but yeah, a, a lot of them I'm just kind of like Loki. It's not hitting it. Loki. It's that. Loki. It's that. Yeah, uh, obviously Loki, but Loki season two just kind of it didn't fumble the ending for me, but it definitely went it wasn't the best for me i, I, I think we it, disagree i think we disagree on that completely because i think it's one of the best things marvel's ever done i i have to disagree with that again it's 
it, it feels like they kind of just expect you to be a little bit blind towards it and kind of like, you know, oh, all of a sudden he has this time power or whatever. But going back to this, it's just the whole Disney Plus. I think something we agree on at least is the Disney Plus show format, not not just even for Marvel, but for Star Wars too, is yeah. just, it's not good. Yeah, because there's you know, been some good stuff in that format. It just, a lot of these shows don't lend themselves well to this format of, right, you've got <clears> six <throat> episodes with 15 minutes credits. Go. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's frustrating because you've had all this star power to do so, so much amazing things and it it just feels heavily wasted. And, like, like, you know, I get it when John Boyega said now, it's like, you know, he didn't, he obviously couldn't foresee the future, but, like, you know, I bet he's thinking now. I'm. Thank God I said no to Disney Plus. Yeah, when uh, he said you're not going to Disney, yeah, not going to Disney Plus me. When this yeah. is something, you know, we like. You got to think when Disney Plus were first coming around. I think we all had in our heads HBO. That's what we had, quality wise. That's what we was hoping. Not but, even HBO. Just not this. This just feels like the bottom bottom of the bin. For yeah. me, it it just feels very half-assed. It just feels like there's no love for the for the making of these things, unlike the Marvel films. Like uh, you know, some of them are hit or miss with Marvel films as well. You know, I'm not saying all of them are perfect, but you can tell that there's people wanting to make them and make something good out of it. Yeah, no, definitely. Anyway, let's get on to our next topic. Gladiator 2. We're getting a trailer tomorrow. We got a new poster. This isn't the poster. The poster actually just won't fit in our thing, and I, I can't be asked putting it in. So you're you, not could have, you could have told me. I would have edited. I would have done. I would have fitted. It's just a poster like that. Wouldn't yeah, I, I, I've, I've worked with worse. Trust me. We could have put it on its side. That would have been good. Yeah. That would have been hilarious. So, Kyle, Gladiator 2 isn't something we've really spoke about, obviously, starring Paul Mescal, Pedro Pascal, uh, Denzel Washington. Uh, a quick one for you. First first things first, have you seen the original Gladiator? Of course. Yes, right. What mm-hmm. did you think of it? Do you think I it thought... lends itself to a sequel? Hmm... I, uh, it, it's it's one of those odd ones. It's like if you kind of can just leave that film alone and it'd be fine. If you do a sequel, there's a bit of a risk. Obviously, like with with every film, there's a there's a risk of you know it being worse or you know probably hurting the brand if anything. But I mean, look at. I think the best way, the best, po- most positive way to look at this is Top Gun. Top Gun 1 came out, obviously much, you know, it's a much older film, the first one. They didn't do a sequel until, you know, recently with Maverick. And it was great, and it sort of surpassed even the first one. Better but than the first. It, Maverick, without yeah. a doubt, is better than the first. But this this, this thing of, you know, the, the thing with Gladiator, Gladiator is already a really fucking fantastic film. Yeah. So it's a very high bar for it to to jump over. You know, if anything, it'll be just as good. That's like my best hope for it. If it ends up being better, I'll be extremely surprised and happy for it. Yeah. I just don't want this to. I just don't want this to suck. Cause... I mean, look, you need to look at Ridley Scott's filmology over the past couple of years. Uh, bring it up actually, because I know he went on a big slump, Ridley Scott, and then he started doing stuff like The Martian, and everyone was like. Hang on a fucking minute. But, you know, if, after you get The Martian, you get Alien Covenant. I'm pretty sure he directed Alien Covenant. Um, I don't think he directed Covenant. Um, do you not think he did? Not mis- I don't think so, no. I'm pretty sure. I, I may be wrong. He did, he did, I'm yeah. Sure. So if you get no, something as, right. as ma- amazing as The Martian, and then you get Alien Covenant, but then you get something like The Last Duel, and it's like, okay. But he's... Yeah, his work as of late See, has been a bit more hit and miss. I want to say this. I don't blame Ridley Scott for Alien Covenant and how that turned out. 
that's one where I'm like, I, I'm fine with, you know, if this movie sucks kind of thing, because he definitely got a lot of pressure from like the fans and, you know, obviously the, the producers and the company behind it and everything to look, people don't really want this. People weren't happy with Prometheus. I was, I was so down for the trilogy that we're going to do. But fucking hell, get the, the banners of... out. Kyle's talking about how much he loves Prometheus again. No, but I'm just saying how they sort of, you know, it's you know, I'm saying Ridley Scott has gone through a couple of duds. Yes, yeah. But Alien Covenant is is a bit of an exception of like, okay, that kind of wasn't his fault. Yeah, I no, I, I get that. that way. And in no way, I'm saying this man's not an amazing filmmaker because he is. He is one of the best to ever do it. Yeah, that ever will do it. And mm-hmm. you got to compare it to like Gladiator to, you know, Gladiator is amazing. If you can bring that same energy to this one, obviously he's got a star-studded cast. Pedro Pascal being like the hottest thing in the world right now. Obviously he's got Last of Us, Mandalorian, Fantastic. I didn't even know he did up. the Last Duel. Yeah, the Last Duel with um, Adam Driver. Obviously, ben Matt, Affleck. Adam Driver, Matt Damon. Yeah, uh, Jodie Comer. Is it? Or is it... Uh, uh, y- no, it's not. Yeah, Comer. Is it? Correct. Jodie Comer, yeah. Uh, Alex some... uh, Lawther is in this as well. For some well. reason, I fought Vanessa Kirby for a brief second. No, no, no. Because no. I, I remember seeing this after seeing... Uh, what was it? Free Guy? Yeah. Yeah. I, I always thought, because obviously yeah. I know if, um, Free Guy came out in the same year, but... I, I remember it not making too much money, though, no, but critically, didn't. I heard it was pretty good, so I was like, yeah, yeah. fuck it, I'll, I'll watch that. Now, House of Gucci, I, I, one of the yes, most recent films as well. did do that. Didn't you get an hand job in that? What? No, that was... Um... <laughs> I, can't, I can't even think of a film to 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 do it to, but no, right, I can. I'll, no, text was... you, I'll text you right now, and you're gonna laugh. Fuck, you ready? <laughs> okay. Right, I'm I'm here. Like like I don't remember, boy. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had no yeah. there. Anyway, uh... yeah. <laughs> Guess you were. Um. Yeah, no, House of Gucci, again, was, you know, not the best film in the world, but I found it extremely entertaining. He's done a lot. Oh, yeah, like I say, best, one of the best to ever do it. One of the best that will ever do it. Now, we're getting the trailer tomorrow. Are you excited for the trailer? You're hoping to see some greatness. I am, and I hope this this does well. If it's if it's a film that's, you know, if it's a good, it turns out to be a good film, then I hope the best for it. I mean, I hope the best for it regardless. Obviously, I don't ever want a film to be bad, but if this turns out to be fucking amazing, then, you know, I hope it gets the, the attention it deserves with the box office and obviously yeah. breaks and things like that. Like, do I think you, a lot of people will go... Do you think we could be looking at a Maverick situation with the box office with this? Where people are like, I remember Gladiator. Yeah, I potentially. Gladiator I Gladiator too. I, yeah, I think I think very very likely because obviously it's you don't get a lot of these films nowadays. You know what I mean? And when no. they when you do, it's typically in like a show format, like with Game of Thrones, House of Dragon, things like that. But in a movie, you don't see a lot of these films doing well. You know, a good example again is The Last Duel, which is a fucking amazing film, but it didn't do well in the box office. Um, just you, you keep talking. I've got another film that I want to speak you, of. Another film you want to speak of now, but yeah, this trailer coming out tomorrow. I'm excited for the trailer. The I remember when I got Gladiator on Blu-ray. This is when I was doing a Blu-ray collection, and it is one film I would go back to over and over again. Obviously, Russell Crowe is great in it, um, and I believe Paul Mescal is playing the young, uh, the grown-up version of the young child in the film. If that's correct, Kyle. Yeah, sorry, I'm the king. Um, which was oh wait, never mind. That was a Netflix film. That one, was that Redley Scott? 
It wasn't Ridley Scott. No, no but it's it Sir Timothy just, Chalamet uh, and um, it's, Robert it's, Patterson. Yeah, it's the it's the time periods I'm on about, like time period I, films. Uh, Napoleon that didn't do well. At the oh, he just time. did that, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, apparently, yeah. Apparently, not so great. Even I, I was looking forward to that, and then apparently there's supposed to be like a three and a half hour cut on Apple TV that's supposed to be amazing. Mm. But oh well. Oh well. Oh well, indeed. Uh, oh, do you well, want to indeed. reveal the film, Kyle? Uh, the King. That's that's the film I was talking no, about. No, another one you got a handy in. I didn't get a handy in it. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You you were there. <laughs> no, you were just us two as well. <laughs> Like when we went to go see oh, a quiet that, place. That handy. We went to go see a quiet place and it was just us two in there. Yeah, I know. We're still whispering. I know. Because we were respectful moviegoers. I didn't want to disturb you. Thank you. Anyway, should we get on to our next topic? Seems like not a day can go by where we are speaking about Deadpool and Wolverine. Now... There's been some fan showings. I'm going to say fan showings the first 40 minutes of Deadpool and Wolverine. And take this with a grain of salt, guys. These are fan reactions. They've gone into this event. They're going to be pumped. I'd probably come out saying it's the best thing ever anyway. But I just want to speak about it. Uh, You know, we're hearing stuff like there's ongoing laughter. It's really funny from start to finish. Are you, you know, I don't think we can get more excited for Deadpool and Wolverine, but Hearing stuff like this, I uh, you know, obviously it's getting you more excited. I don't, I don't think, I don't think they needed to do any sort of special fan screening because it's not like the Flash where it it needed this to help it. It needed something like that to help it. I guess they're probably just doing this because of obviously the reception Marvel has had as of late. Yeah, if they if they if they were still running the high highs. I don't think we, you know, we'd have a. And if they were still running the high highs, can I tell you something? I do not think this would be getting the marketing push it's getting. Mm. I think this not buried, but I think this would be very. Oh, it's like like on a Shang Chi level. It's like oh, we got Deadpool and Wolverine coming up. Mm. Maybe I mean, well, uh, but then again, marketing's don't... always yeah, marketing was always supposed to be big with this film. Yeah. I think because it's you know and... it's it's. It's Deadpool as well. The marketing's always great. And it looks like they've been having fun on this tour. Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. I mean, Even the director as well. Yeah, Sean Levy looks like he's proper getting into it as well. So, he, he just looks like the sort of... Like the innocent father of these two children that are just causing mayhem. Well, and he's just he's kind got, of... You know, he's worked with them yeah. both so much. Obviously, Real Steel with Hugh mm-hmm. Jackman, which I know you really like. Is it you who really likes Real Steel, or is it Zara? Zara. Right. So that's basically you, anyway. Um... <laughs> I think it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, 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 Brian Reynolds with Sean Levy. Free Guy, which, when we saw in the same... We, we did a double feature, if I remember correctly. Mm, what did we see? We saw Free Guy... And something else. It, it, like both in the cinema? Yeah. I, I'm i going to go out on a limb and say we probably saw uh, James Gunn's Suicide Squad for like the third time. If I'm remembering correctly. Uh, I don't think it was that. I think it, it was... Came out. August of 21. Did Free Guy, yeah? Uh, Ready Player uh, what? What? Ready Player One. Um, just keep talking, keep talking. Yeah, uh, I, I will find it. I'm pretty sure it's August of 21, and the Suicide Squad came out in like the back end of July of 21. So it's probably around there. We probably saw the Suicide Squad for a third time. But anyway, guys, first reactions for Deadpool and Wolverine, kind of, because it's only the first 40 minutes. Like I said at the beginning, the fan reaction. So they're going to be pumped up. They're going to be times 100. But I'm still quite happy. We're hearing really positive things from this film. I'm hearing the things I want to hear. Because I want to go into a Deadpool film. I want to laugh. And it seems like 
that's what's you're going right. To uh, it's it's well, we didn't go see the Jungle Cruise, but it was the Suicide Squad. Kyle Black did. Widow. Yeah, we came out as well. Yeah, yeah, I don't think we'd have seen that again. <laughs> that film you texted me about also came out at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Don't Breathe 2 as well. Yeah, I felt like Don't Breathe 2 came out a lot. Like, uh, yeah, I thought it came out way before that. I wanted both of them, was it, Kyle? Yeah. But <laughs> before we get on to the, the meat and taste episode, are you happy with hearing these very positive reactions from Deadpool and Wolverine? Yes. Okay, let's <laughs> go. I'm just so excited. Guys, we've got matching t-shirts and everything for it. Oh, we're going to like such pillocks, but no. that's great. And I, I still, I, honestly, mate, we, I just need to like nut up, right? I want to ask people once we get out there what the thought of it, you know, just build a video. We'll start with the biggest nerds and then maybe we can move on to some chavs if there's any there. Uh, no, because I'd rather not have my phone stolen while I'm holding it up to them. It's alright, mate. I'm there. I'll protect you. Mm. You think anyone's stealing all from us? I've got 17 and a half inch biceps. Callum, you won't catch them, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, you catch them and go, oh, you're going to be in big trouble when my mate gets here. <laughs> Come on, I'll take you to go see Candyman. <laughs> That's where he got handy. <laughs> I didn't get handy. He got a handy in Candyman. <laughs> no, I didn't. Kyle got a handy no. in Candyman. That sounds even worse yeah. when you just say it as like a normal sentence. Kyle got a handy in yeah. Candyman. Cool. That's going to be like legends of the channel. Kyle got I didn't get a handy in Candyman. <laughs> just tell the truth. Tell the truth. I'm telling the truth. I didn't. Well, if if it were true, I would. I would. Now, I here's would the thing, mate. True. If it was a blower, you kind of ruin the whole joke because it doesn't rhyme. Well, I hate to ruin a good joke, but you know. <laughs> no, I'm so, joking. Anyway. It wasn't any of those things. Jesus fucking Christ. So, anyway, moving on from Kyle getting a handy in candy. Sorry, mate. I cannot stop saying that. <laughs> Being candy, man. Oh, Christ. It's a... Uh, House of the Dragon, Season 2, Episode 4. Spoilers. Because, God, Obviously. we want to speak about... We ain't even spoke about this yet. This is original raw reactions right now. Kyle, what do you think of this episode? Do you love it? Did you hate it? Did you really fucking love it? I think it was definitely a, a breath of fresh air, so to speak, because obviously, I can't lie, the season's been quite slow, despite, you know, it's great start, uh, first episode in season two, which was fantastic. I do feel like the whole season, the season as a whole has been quite slow. I think it um, it's all been leading up to this, though, if you know what I mean. I feel like we are, there's no going back from what's just happened in this episode now. Yeah, the no, dragons have gone to war. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I was watching it this morning, and you know, I was watching it on Now TV, and the episode title was called, um, it was just called House of the Dragon Four. Like it didn't actually have an episode title. I think it reveals um, them at the end, so it don't, yeah. it don't give the title just in case it spoils all, which I like about Now TV. And then after you watch yeah. the episode, the title goes on. Um, but yeah, this episode was, again, it started off quite slow, but then when you get to, again, full spoilers, when you get to the dragon stuff and the big battle is, it's what we've kind of been watching. Last you know, 20 minutes of this. Be. Perfection. Yeah. When Rhaenyra's speaking really good. to think... Jace, Aegon yeah. suiting up, goes to Sunfire. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah. Oh, we're getting goosebumps. I, I can't lie. I, I don't know where they've left it. In regards to the king, Aegon, don't say anything. I don't want to know. But, you know, I'm kind of like, oh, is, is Aegon dead? You know, 
the dragon seems like it's maybe potentially still alive. I, I don't know. I'll, I want to wait until the well, next episode. There's one thing I know, you know a lot of people certain. know. Yeah. Rhaenys is definitely fucking dead. Yeah, Rhaenys is... What a badass motherfucker she is, though. Eve Best. Yeah. My... I'd say my biggest issue is, like, obviously, for people going into this knowing the events that unfold, they probably have... They probably don't have this issue. But someone going into it first time, and well, I like don't I said, know really... I was surprised about this, happen. because I just know bits of yeah, the dance. But, but this is the thing, though. My main issue was, like, it... Towards the end, it just pitched it up as, like, yeah, she's dying. She's gonna die. Like, it was really fucking obvious i think that's like my only gripe with it yeah again for people who have read the books and know what happens and you know how the events sort of unfold i don't see them having an issue with it but someone who's like a first timer going in watching in not knowing what's meant to happen this just kind of gave it you know the way the scene sort of unfolded it kind of gave it away the thing that surprised me the most well was aegon um yeah i i like the detail of him trying to burn the dragon even though they can't be burned really but she's just like attack so yeah, yeah she's the more experienced one Definitely. kind of thing i think he were going for the rider whereas you know she's going yeah. for the dragon which takes out both yeah look i did not like aegon in season one i thought i oh, was a spoiled little cunt which he is still and he's a horrible person but this guy playing aegon is so Good. Like, you know, the bond he has with his dragon is way more of a bond than Danny had with any of us. And you see it for like 10 seconds when he goes to the dragon pit and it goes up to him. You see a fucking dragon smile and yeah. nudge into him. And then uh, yeah. Rhaenys and Melis as well, when she's speaking to her and she goes, we're off to war again, old girl. And I was like, I just getting goosebumps. I was like, oh my God, it's happening. Yeah. No, it was, you know, like I say, I, I really enjoyed the action of this episode. Obviously, action isn't everything, but it's something that, you know, it definitely, the show definitely needed with its slow burn yeah. with, with the past couple of episodes. But again, I'm just a bit like, uh, they could have done that a bit better where it just felt a bit more, you know, a more of a surprise well, kind I, of thing. I'm, and Game I'm of Thrones gonna... is known for yeah being su surprising. surprising. But this just felt like I kind of knew the outcome before the battle had even finished. Well, I'm going to break your heart right now. Yeah. I don't think you'll agree with me on this. I think this might be the best episode of the show. Season 1 and 2. Uh, Another scene I want to point out that was fantastic. Eamon and uh, Aegon sitting across from each other on the table, speaking Valerian. It was it was a strong episode. I don't think it's the best. Which what I, would you I call say, it? Just out of curiosity, because there's some great episodes of House of the Dragon. And I, I'm not I, saying this I, is I, the best by far, but yeah. it's up there. Maybe I'd have to go through again and think. But I'm right yeah, now I, so hyped. I'll say I'll say this. I'll say this. I think the best episode is still yet to come. That's okay. where I, that's what I'll say. All right. Yeah. yeah. Again. Again, I loved it. I was smiling all the ways at the end. You know, I thought yeah. this was fantastic. Don't know if it's the best yet. That's where I stand with it. But again, this show has been really, really great so far. Again, the only issue I've had is the slow burn in season two. But this kind of picks up and makes up for it. I just hope they can continue that momentum going. It doesn't have to be all action all the time. Just have some more bits happening. Yeah, which... Obviously, let's talk about Damon for a bit, actually. Seems like he's off having his own haunted house adventure. <laughs> well, yeah. I seen a meme earlier, and it said, um, everyone else fighting Damon. You know, like the haunting of Hill House and stuff like that. The, the haunting yeah. of Harren Hall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. But Matt it's... Smith's playing it great. Yeah, I don't think we've ever really seen him sort of in this freaked out. You know, he's always been quite, don't want to say sinister, but cold and calculated and, you know, 
here we start start to see he's sort of like, oh, he's he's a little bit freaked out by whatever's happening here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so you know, I think we all would be, and we see Millie again. That were nice, uh, but he takes her yeah. fucking head clean off. That wasn't nice. Ah, that's that's something as well. I thought looked a bit fucking weird. Yeah, there's two there's two you know head removal scenes. Should we say the second one's definitely much better, but the one with Millie just felt a bit you know well Renera young Renera just felt really fucking strange. You know, Damon moved really cool. Matt Smith did a great job with just the the quick action, but. I don't know, the CGI just looked yeah. a bit... Yeah, we'll just say the one it with Supergirl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, obviously, this episode as well, Alison, she's taking a little bit of uh, Planned Parenthood uh, pregnancy abortion juice. Uh, yeah. Do you think Cole's knocked her up, or... Do yeah, you think it's too obviously. late? Because... He's been gone a while. You've got to think he's gone a fair distance from King's Landing. So, do you think it could be too late? Essentially. Well, you know, if if so, it wouldn't surprise me. But, again, I'm not sure. And I... Yeah. You know me, I don't like to speculate. I kind of just want to go into this and watch it blind because it, I could so easily find out everything that happens. I, I just like going into it blind. Like I said, I didn't watch the trailers for this built leading up to it. And I'm I'm just loving it that way so far. Yeah, uh, I'm what... trying to re. I think I think I'm trying to relive that Game of Thrones. Yeah. Not watching any of the trailers. I just watch the show as it is. That's how I. That's how I kind of do now, Game of Thrones. One thing I want to say is a character that I have liked the beginning of this season. Who I thought, why are you being a little cunt today? Do you know what I'm gonna say? What Kristen Cole? I said I liked Kyle. Yeah, Kristen Cole. I liked him at one point. Yeah. Not in this season, I ain't. Oh, right, okay. Kristen Cunt, I call him. No, uh, Jace, Jaceris, Rhaenyra's eldest son. Mm. When she comes back and he's like, where have you been? And stuff like that. And he's questioning her, it's like, mate, if you were my boy, I would... <clears throat> Yeah, but you can you can kind of understand where he's coming I from. I can understand so where he's coming it, from, but yeah. Yeah. There's a time and a place for shit uh, like that. Not really. I mean, there's not much time. War is literally, they're at war. All right, but well, there's definitely it's, a place for shit like that, and it's not in front of all our advisors. Yeah, but I, I, I'm, I'm still, I don't mind. I just thought the dynamic was great between them all. Oh, them two. Um, Emma Darcy... And the young, the young lad who plays Jaceris, I can say that because he's younger than us. Actually, they do an amazing job of acting together. I feel like their scenes mm. together are really great. Yeah. What's his name? It's. Are you looking? I'm assuming you're looking. I can look. I can certainly Hot look for D that. Jaceris, but not Jaceris or like just Jace. That's what we want. Jay's got a trace. Yeah. I struggling to get somewhere with it. Better find Stop it quicker. Giving me... Better find it quicker. Fuck off, no you won't. Uh, uh, no you won't find yes, it. I'll find uh, it. Harry Collette. Motherfucker. Ah, Fuck you, MacBook. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, he's great. Uh, but yeah, how would you rate this episode then, before we go? I give it an 8. I'm going to go... I don't know if it's just recency bias and it's going into it and I'm like, I just love the episode that much. But I don't want to give it a nine because I'll I'll look like a house. Li- I'm giving it. I'll, I'll give it a nine. I love this episode. And Vega seems to have a signature move where he kills other dragons. Well, when she kills other dragons, 
just comes up from underneath and just <laughs> that's how we got oh. Lysaris on their dragon mm. and that's how we got Melise and Renice. so yeah I'm giving this a 9 just got me like so, I, I, and that's purely going it's... off how it made me feel I think maybe there is better episodes but when I was watching this the way it made me feel yeah not a lot of I stuff think does that I think I think the reason why you kind of feel that way is the same reason I'm kind of like the way I look at the episode is you know again the season's just been very slow and you know that's not to say that it's it's a bad season it's just been a bit you know, yeah. Can we speed it up a bit? Can I, we jump on the track here? I think that seems to be a bit of a theme with season twos of shows. Mm. Like, but you know, you look at Game of Thrones season two. I thought that was relatively slow right up until like the end point. Mm. You know, a famous one, Walking Dead season two, one of the slowest seasons of TV ever. <laughs> Yeah, no, I still enjoyed Walking Dead season two, even though I stopped after season four. I think it was, but again, I think that's just something you're. Yeah, that's a factor. That's definitely a factor. It, no, it so... definitely is, and I've enjoyed the slow burn. I've liked the little story yeah. details here and there, uh, and I'm pretty sure you've enjoyed the slow burn as well. But we've definitely wanted to see some stuff. Yeah, just you know, I get it. Let's have you know. Uh, if if it picked up on say like the third episode, I think I'd be a little bit happier. But because we had like two episodes, we had the first great episode, and then two and three just felt very very slow. I'm glad that this picked up. I'm just a bit like it took half an episode, took half the episode to get there. But yeah, but that's I'd that's when I was... started getting there though, like that last twenty minutes, and it was like all building up. And yeah, on it. Like I say, I'm giving it a nine just because of how it made me feel. Yeah. It just made me feel a certain way. Yeah. I still think for me personally, the stronger episode is probably still in in season two terms we're talking. I think episode one is still the best for me. Uh, yeah, episode one's great, but I, I really thought two was, you know, two were definitely on the slower side, but I thought two were great as well. It had a yeah. lot of great character moments, did too. Mm-hmm. And I think Free just tried to have some more great character moments. But put it this way, you could have maybe cut some stuff out of episode three, maybe cut some stuff out of episode two, uh, episode four, and made like a hour and a half long fucking great episode. Because they've done episodes that length before, they're not. Scared of it, but uh, yeah, yeah, this will definitely please a lot of people though with the dragon stuff. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, me included. Anyway, Kyle, anything you want to add before we go? No, you don't want to let them know what's in the pipeline, what you're working on right now. I'll let them know if you don't know. No, we are well, we've recorded a X-Men Origins Wolverine video. We've recorded a Logan video. We've recorded a Deadpool and a Deadpool 1... Uh, Deadpool 2 video. Uh, look at the pain in his face. But, um, yeah. We're going to do our best to have all them I'll out. be honest. If, if, if I haven't had this new setup, I don't think I probably would have got all those videos out. Uh, I don't think I'll... I would have been able to do them, but yeah. thankfully I can. So, so yeah. Again, it just takes a bit of time because it's video editing, and I'm getting back into the groove of it. I don't want to shout a video for the sake of it. Want to do something fun and different as as much as I can. But yeah. Yes, that's also my nickname for Kyle's mother: fun and different. Back off. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, give us a like, give us a subscribe. Uh, and if you really liked this video, go see uh, Candyman with Kyle and give him a handy while he's watching Candyman. Oh. I'm going to bring that up every day. 
Uh, no, you won't. You'll forget by fucking in an hour. Because you'll be asleep. I'm going to write it on my wall back here. Right, guys. See you later. Uh, roll the outro, even though I'm not playing one at the end of the full video, but roll it anyway. <laughs>